In today's video, I'll be sharing with you how you can stretch out the navigation in 7.1 when you have a button on one side, the logo in the other, and the navigation in the center. If you've dealt with this type of header layout before, you've probably noticed that for some reason, even though there's space available on the sides, the navigation just gets a little bit shrink down and even drops into multiple lines instead of expanding out a little bit. So if that's something that you want to solve today, you're going to find out exactly what to do. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. So if you're interested in learning this CSS trick, make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Alrighty, so here I have my 7.1 side and as you can see, I have my navigation set to the center with a button on the side and the logo on the other side. And even though there's some extra space, at least visible in here, my navigation links are sitting in two lines. So let's go ahead and fix this. Now, the way that we can work around this in 7.1 is by actually reducing the space that the side elements occupy. So let's take a quick look here inside the inspect element tool to show you what I mean. If we take a look at how this is built, the Heather display desktop container where we have, well, the desktop navigation here, you can see how we have one container called Heather title nav wrapper. Then we have another one called Heather actions. And then we have the Heather burger, which is not really showing up on desktop. This one only shows up on mobile. Now looking deeper into the other two containers, you can see how here, Heather actions, so the right side that we have in here, whether you have a button or you have social icons or anything like that, this container has a width set of 33%. So basically just one third of the space of the navigation. Then if we take a look at the other container, you're going to see that the other two elements in here are within this element. So if I open this up, we have the Heather title and then we have the Heather navigation. So the Heather title has a width of 33% as well and it has a flex value of 1133%. So basically what this flex value is doing in here is just that it's letting that element grow if there's enough space available, it's allowing it to shrink down if there's not enough space available, and it's setting sort of like the starting width as 33% as well. So in order to stretch out the Heather navigation, what we can do is shrink down those 33% that we have for both the logo and the action side. And by doing that, because all of this has been created with Flexbox, then that Heather navigation is going to be allowed to expand a little bit more, because if we take a look at the actual values that this is using, we have an initial width of 34%, which is also shown in here, but this container is also allowed to stretch out if there's more space available. So if we shrink down the sides that are making that area smaller, we're going to be able to stretch it out and have all of our links in one single line. So let's go ahead and start here with the Heather title, which is the closest one that I have. I'm going to go ahead and grab this selector that Squarespace is already using to set that width and that flex value so that we can easily overwrite those things without having to use the important rule. I'm going to go into my custom CSS window in here, apply that in there. And then, like I said, I'm going to change that flex value to zero, zero auto, which is basically going to stop that logo from stretching out is going to stop it from shrinking down and is going to respect the width value that we're going to give it. Right now, if we were to leave it as it is, you can see that because this side is still a little bit bigger and this side became smaller, the navigation links here are a little bit lopsided. So we don't want that to happen. So let's first make the same modification to the right side and then we're going to decide what width we're going to be using for those two areas so that we can keep the navigation stretch out, but centered. I'm going to go ahead and inspect this and I'm going to grab, let's see here. We're going to grab this selector that again, Squarespace is using to set the width to 33%. I'm going to grab that. And then I'm going to group all of this together because we also need to apply the same flex zero, zero auto value. In case you didn't notice that here inside the right side, we have a separate snippet that was setting the flex row to zero and the flex shrink to one. And because I want both things to react the same way, I'm just grouping everything to make sure that both have zero, zero for flex row and flex shrink so that they don't go bigger or smaller than they should be. And they both respect the new width that we're going to give it. So now that we have this in place, we can go ahead and just decide what width we want both elements to have once again, to avoid this lopsiding thing that is going on right now. So we can go ahead and start with something like 10% and then see if that works. You can see how both things fit 
inside their containers. Let's just go ahead and do a quick check here in the back end. So yeah, 10% works for the contact button that we have there. And then if we take a look at the header title, we can see how this one also fits in a width of 10%. If we were to use a very small number, something that would be smaller than the actual content that we have in here, we may come across a couple of issues. So if I were to set this to something like really small, like 1%, you can see how that is going to affect the size of the logo. And that's not something we want. We want to set a minimum value that is going to allow us to showcase the content that we have on those sites without adding too much space to the sites of the navigation. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to 10% because that seems to work. And now if we save this and we take a look, you can see how now we have everything stretched out really nicely. And then if we start shrinking things down, we still get to keep everything in one single line until there's no more space available because that may happen at some point. And then everything is just going to either stack or go into mobile. In my case, it seems like I'm going to be able to keep everything in one line. Let's see. Yeah, everything stays in one single line until I hit mobile. But in your situation, it may be possible that things stack at some point, unless you make additional modifications to stop that from happening. One of the things that you could do is just bring up the burger button a little bit sooner than before. But in general terms, this should help you keep all of the links in one single line on pretty much all devices. All right, and that's it. That's everything that you need to do to be able to stretch out your navigation in 7.1. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content just like this. And if you're not a member of the club already, make sure to check out the description box below to learn how you can join us. I will see you next time.